Hello, everybody. Gravy Train here with another episode of Gravy Training. So there's been a lot of complaints, and rightly so. I messed up uh, with the interface on the other videos, taking up too much of the screen and blocking the content of the programs and all of that. So I'm going to go through. I'm not going to replace the other videos, um, but I am going to add a summary version and kind of go through. I've got a fully running set of like a forestry setup here, um, everything you need to kind of get started. And I'm just going to run you through uh, what those programs look like uh, in a way that's easier to see. And I am going to also share a few extra tips that I've kind of come across. So let's get started. So first of all, you can see here, I've, I've got my groups named a little bit differently than I used to. And I made some updates in the uh, Steam guide. And what I've got is, these are just abbreviations. So B is for builder, C is for crafter, F is for forestry, H is for har harvester, M is for maker, um, and that's more for like making raw materials, whereas crafter is crafting items. Um, R is for recharger or winder, and V is for mover, like M-O-V-E-R. And yeah, so that makes it really easy. And then looking at the actual robots in these groups, very quick and easy to see that these are all movers. So when I'm creating new bots and programming them, I can just drop them in here. So movers, recharges, etc. So let's get started. If you're just watching this video instead of the other ones, that's great. Um, so first, let's look at the actual forestry operation. Now, some things that I did discover here in terms of the forestry and right now things are a little sloppy here because I've got all this stuff full up. Um, I'm not consuming much more. I'm not expanding. I've been kind of taking a break, putting some guides together. But what I did learn is that you can actually very easily make much more compact tree farms without having to do anything crazy. So I've just got these four blocks of nine uh, trees, which has been keeping me for at least at this scale, well, well stocked. You could easily go bigger or make them like four blocks of four or something like that and expand them out however big you need to, but having a nice small area that we're working in. I mean, you can see here the distances that my bots have to move is very short, uh, which means that it's very efficient. I can grab more acorns, plant them. I can take logs. They're all coming right here. Everything is all really kind of tightly packed in here. And then you can kind of scale out from here without any issues. So that's that's the first thing as far as that. Um, so in order to do that, basically I would I just dug these three by three grids by hand, leaving some room in the middle. I'll eventually put some some track in here, some road to make travel across there go quicker. Uh, but all you have to do is just manually plant in here, and once the trees are grown, once they get chopped down, they'll be stumps. So let's look now at my forestry group and let's look at what my diggers do. And the diggers are the ones that are actually going to be critical in building your, your far tree farms in terms of spacing. So if you were just to say, okay, instead of find nearest tree stump, if you found nearest dirt in an area, then it's going to only get, and we can hold control and we can see here, like, okay, so it plants on this one because it's 232, 102. That's an uh, even and an even number coordinate. This one it wouldn't, this one it would, this one it wouldn't, this one it would, and so on. So in a in a normal 3x3 three three grid, it's only going to plant in 4 out of the 9 squares. The, by doing it um, based on digging up tree stumps, however, as soon as the trees get chopped down, there's a tree stump. So you're finding the tree stump and digging that up instead of just finding dirt and doing that. And that is how you can actually very, very easily make very compact, you're saving four times the space effectively. Uh, you can make very compact tree farms, highly efficient. So the logic here is I'm going to say um, until my hands are empty, well, first of all, I'm gonna loop over the whole thing forever. And until my hands are empty, I'm gonna find the nearest tree stump. I'm gonna move to the tree stump and I'm gonna use my shovel. When that's done, if my hands are empty, it'll move on to the next, otherwise it'll keep going. So the, 
the loop here, the condition here says, keep going until my hands are empty. Once my hands are empty, it'll move down here. It'll move down to crude spade storage, which is right here. And you can actually see if I highlight. I think I have to be editing. Uh, but yeah, you can see that it's right here. So it'll move here, it'll grab a spade, it'll come back out and continue them. So that is the, all you have to do. And I've added all these diagrams, to, or all the, the core diagrams to my Steam post. Uh, but if you need to see this, uh, you can pause this right here and take a look at program and reproduce this on your own. Very simple. Now I do have all my axes and spades and pickaxes are all being crafted over here, so they're always going to be on hand. So that is a spade person. Now an acorn um, is, is the guy that's going to be coming over here and taking from my acorn storage and planting it into the holes that the spade, uh, spade bot digs. So it's going to start out inside of a loop to just keep it going. Until his hands are full, he's going to grab from the crate here. So in, for this level of cheat bots, that's going to be three inventory slots. So until his hands are full, he's going to take three times. One, two, three. And now he comes down here and he's going to find a hole. He's going to bury the item. And he's going to keep going until he runs out of... Um, of acorn so as long as he's got stuff in his inventory so now his hands are empty and he's going to run back and fill them up really simple and i've got uh two people digging because this uh digging is one of the slower bottlenecks so by having two people digging i can get through this a lot quicker and actually um because the more frequently i can plant the better and that's my forestry right now. So then, with in addition to the forestry, I've got movers, which these are the ones, they grabbing the acorns. So let's look at a simple one first. Let's look at somebody grabbing logs. So they're basically, this guy just forever is going to loop, find the nearest log in this area, move to it, pick it up, and then move to this log storage and add the log to that log storage. When he can't add the log to the log storage, he's just going to stand there in front of it, holding it, waiting until he can. Now I've got other bots handling the overflow. But this is a really simple, you can do this exact same thing for picking up sticks, picking up the acorns, uh, picking up anything. Now, there are some more advanced ways to deal with this stuff. For example, let's see. So, okay, so here's picking up sticks. So he's going to come out here. He's going to, until his hands are full, he's going to find the nearest stick in this area. He's going to move to it. He's going to pick it up. Then if his hands are full, he will move down to this next section, move to stick storage, which is right here, and add to the stick storage. But if his hands aren't full, he's going to continue to pick up sticks until they are. So hands until hands full, until hands empty, it's a really common way to load up your inventory, and if we actually look at what this guy's carrying, he is, I think he was able to put one stick away, but he hasn't able to put back the other two. So that's why his hands are not empty, he's still in this loop. Stick storage is full, but if I come over here and take two sticks out, which I'll have to swap, take two sticks out, he's adding all his stuff in, and then he keeps going. So let me just dump these out here. But nice and easy. Uh, for these, these are just the people. So because my bots are really primitive right now, eventually I'll end up replacing these bots and just making it so the same bots that are creating the tools will actually be moving the tools. But these are basically just taking the tools that are being created, putting them into the, um, into the storage, and that's it. No special logic or anything like that. Uh, so let's see, stone is doing the same thing. It's until his hands are full, picking up stone from over here, and then he's putting it into this storage until his hands are empty, 
and so on. And then this, so this guy will wait until the miner actually picks up all the stone. So the only really complicated one I've got is, is set up to handle overflow. And what we've got here, you can see, and let me actually kind of pause this and walk you through it. So, and right now all three of these are full, so it's kind of <laughs> overkill, but until his hands are full, it starts out, until his hands are full, he's going to go out here and he's going to find acorns. And then first he's going to come down here and he's going to, until his hands are empty, he's going to move to tree, tree seed storage one and attempt to add the tree seeds seed storage one. Once he can't do that, so once this one is full, this error condition, so this error checkbox means proceed when an error occurs. So if he can't add any more, but his hands are not empty, he will then move down to this next one, which attempts to put them here, or this next one, which attempts to put them here, and where is 12? Oh no, it's just these three, okay. So yeah, it attempts to put it in this one first, if it can't, it puts it in here, and if it can't, it puts it in here. Now this brings up the concept of a queue, so you could actually queue up your stuff so you would have like a line of containers and you would put things in the first one and have your bots like almost like as if this was a conveyor belt and move the move everything down until like the end one is full and fill them up that way so you could actually have things get picked up from this one but dropped off in this one so you basically have a lot more storage. And it builds up like a reservoir, um, so you're not going to like run out of this and you got to reprogram your bots and all that. I'm not extremely happy with the way bots with the way storage works right now. Hopefully that'll get a little bit better. But for now, that's how you can kind of manage that. So that is the acorn stuff, and that's making use of like a failover scenario. So if you can't succeed at this one, it's going to try this one again. And if you can't succeed at this one, it's going to try this one again. And that's a really good tactic for filling up multiple containers. You usually use it on destinations. So you're picking something up one place. Oh, this one isn't going to work, so I'm going to try the next one and the next one. We'll start them up. And those are my movers. My rechargers are pretty simple as well. So I've got two zones. Um, one of them is tied to a sign or a billboard here, so it's a nice big area. The other one is just kind of covering the crafting stuff going on here, and then there's some overlap. So I have that same principle. It's trying to find a bot discharge in this first area, and it moves to the bot, and it'll recharge the bot, but it can fail. So it doesn't find a bot, it fails, moves on to the next section, and looks for a bot in the other area, or looks for a, a discharged bot in the other area. If it fails there, um, depending on how much RAM I had or how much me memory I had, I could add more memory or use higher grade bots, and you can cover more and more areas this way. A tip that I do, and in this case it's an extreme overlap, but usually I'll have like a little bit of an overlap, and you have the bots then move when they can't complete any more orders, they move to a point to wait. And that point should be contained in multiple recharge zones. The reason you do that is you can have two bots recharging, and if this bot was out here, like this one right here, this R bot, goes over here, and, well, and actually right now there's very little that isn't covered by the main, so this is kind of moot. But okay, so say the bot comes up here, and it runs out as it's going to this pole builder. Well, the other R bot that's over here will be in the range in the same zone and we'll see it and come rescue it. Vice versa, if something was over here, say picking blueberries, and the other bot was waiting here, it'll be in the zone to come find it here. So no matter where they're sitting in either one of these zones, there'll be a bot that can perceive both of them. And if you were just controlling one area, then like this, these are going in both, so it really doesn't matter as much, but because they're, if you're only doing one area, then having some overlap allows you to um, have one bot always covering the other ones. And that is my recharges. Now, I usually upgrade these bots first. They'll be one of the first bots that I upgrade because the Tier 2 bots are faster. The Tier, or the, the tier 1 bots, the T1 Mark 1 bots are faster. 
and the Mark II bots are considerably faster. So I'll usually update these because the less downtime you have because of winding, better. So they're one of the first bots that I actually will update. That is my movers. Oh, and see, so I've got this guy here. He's a log mover. I just drag him up. I know he goes in B. I've got my rechargers. We covered foresters. My makers. So the makers are going to be pretty typical. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab a stick. Take the stick from the stick storage. Put it into the workstation. Move to the workbench. Or grab a stone, put it in, the, in there, and then it gets created. And, and if this bot, if I had memory upgrades for the bots, I could have them actually then take the thing and move it. When I was building these, I didn't have the memory upgrades yet, so not really all that important. But that's going to be the same for uh, making axes. This one is actually should be... A V moving axes, not making axes. I'm going to update that and then drag this guy into the movers. So I'm making blades, same thing. This is all really simple. Making picks, really simple. Making planks. So here's one thing that I ran into. So a lot of times when you're going to be upgrading, like I'll use uh, discs to upgrade because it's easier just to take the programming from an existing bot and put it onto a new bot. You want to be careful about when you're just using hands full and, and all that for crafting things. So this is going to go and just twice it's going to uh, find a plank. Okay, so this is going to find the log and it's going to put it into the chopping block and that's going to make two planks. So then it's going to find the plank pick up the plank, find a plank, pick up the plank, and I'm doing it two times, which is exactly the number that is created. And then I'm going to put these away. Now, technically, I could do this until hands are empty, but the point is, if I just do this until hands are full, say for some reason one log made three planks, if I do this until hands are full, and then I upgrade this bot later to a tier, to a, to a mark, two, mark one bot that has four spots, now it's going to get out of sync, so I'm not going to be picking up the right number of things. Or if this did this until hands are full, he's going to put down, he's going to use one log, which is going to generate two planks. Then he's going to try to pick up until his hands are full, or he's going to get stopped. Because there's only two planks and he can carry three. So this is where you would use the times. Also, you're protecting yourself from upgrades, say if you're picking up until your hands are full for like one of these guys building bots because you need three planks so you're just going to grab until your hands are full and then put them over here until your hands are empty well you don't want to do that you want to be explicit and use the times so that is building planks poles basically working the same way and then building spades all of that so your your makers you could make these p for producers or call them whatever you want this is just what i use so no requirement to do anything special. Those are pretty straightforward. My harvesters, so I, I separate harvesters be, from the forestry people because one, you've got um, miners, which are technically harvesters, and you've got, so I've, I use like, okay, harvester with an ax, harvester with a pick. The pick is doing the mining, the ax is doing the chopping, but I can very easily just say I've got all my storage is filled up. Like right now, all my storage is filled up. So I can just say, everybody stop harvesting. All my harvesters just stop. And now nobody's going to be chopping anything down. Nobody's going to be gathering any stone. Although I should probably, the stone I can, what just happened? Oh, I dragged him out. Um, I probably want to get the pick going. Although he's still going. I don't know why they didn't stop him. Must have been in the middle of... Does my axe stop? My axe is stopped. Okay, he was in the middle of, of chopping there, picking. That's why he couldn't. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's harvesting. I mean, this is you know, the, the basic programming is pretty darn simple. Uh, crafting, I don't have any crafters right now. And then builders is just a matter of getting the material, finding a blueprint in that material, moving to it, and adding it. Now, log storage, I don't need to do anything special because these bots are only carrying one. But planks are doing it until their hands are full and hands are empty. Same with poles. 
So now if I go here and I say, let's go ahead and, and create, uh, and I've already got one of these, so I'm put it over here, and let's create some ghosts. I don't know why it's not letting me stack these. Probably because I start. Yeah, there we go. Still a few bugs. But now my bots will just go and they will create all this stuff. And like, so the code for that is pretty simple building, selecting your area. For builders, I especially try to use a sign. Um, and I think. No, I do not have signs for this. I'll, I'll make signs. This is just a game that I was playing through, so. Um, but yeah, that's as simple as it is. So things get more complicated from here. Um, but I mean, basically, I will have some more advanced videos on programming, some special tasks down the line. But it's, it's best, at least early on, to keep your program simple and focused and not trying to do too much uh, and don't try to get too fancy because you will end up uh, making things way more complicated than they need to be. So uh, that being said, I hope this is helpful. I hope it was much easier to see what I was showing you here. I hope this is a lot more concise. Uh, consider joining our, our uh, gravy training community discord. The link is down below. Uh, make sure you check out uh, some of the other playlists and other videos and like and subscribe and hit the bell and we'll see you next time thanks for watching bye bye